G'day. Today we've got a Jeep Cherokee uh, 1998 model and the owner's complaining of uh, funny upshifts. So we've just um, checked the oil level and if you have a look these transmissions have a uh, like a pr uh, pressure cable on it. Um, so we're just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark where it is and then we're gonna put our foot down to the floor and just see if that's adjusted correctly. Well, speaking with the owner, he, uh, he reckons he has had a little bit of head work done on it. Um, so it's important to, to talk to the owner um, on recent work done when these sort of problems occur. Anyway, what I've done, I've just marked where it is uh, with liquid paper. Just examining, making sure his floor mat isn't stuck under the accelerator or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do is use my old trusty accelerator tool. Just a, a rod, steel rod with a, a flat bit of steel um, with a hole drilled through it. And it actually locks when it's tilted. So I'm going to use that just to push the accelerator all the way down and lock it up against the seat. There we go, that's holding it flat to the floor. And we're just going to see how tight that cable is now under the bonnet again. Now that uh, pressure cable should be just, just tight. So if you have a look, you can see it's quite loose there. So what we need to do to tighten that is we need to um, lengthen the inner cable or move the outer cable that way. So the way we do that is I'll just press this down and just slide it out with my hand. That's like a little lock mechanism. There's a little ratchet type setup on it. Um, and I'll just do it to the maximum just so there's a little bit of tension on that um, now that it's flat to the floor. Now I've just tightened that and it's just started to rotate this linkage so you can see that, that that's the maximum it'll go and if we have a look at the mark it's probably about a centimetre or so or half an inch um, from where it was so I'm gonna take it for another test run now and just see how it behaves There we go, we've got a 500% improvement, um, shifting normally now, so we're just going to go ahead now and do a, a transmission service on it. You can see he's done 488,000 kilometres with this transmission. Um, this the set, uh, a new owner anyway, he's only had it about 18 months, and like I mentioned before, um, always important to talk to the customer um, Especially uh, questions like if it's been worked on in recent times or anything like that. This bloke's had a, um, a bit of head work done on it, so they probably uh, readjusted that uh, throttle valve cable or pressure cable. Now these have the A340 series transmissions in them. Um, what we're also going to do, we're going to just check the oil level in the uh, transfer case. Sometimes the seal goes on the on the extension housing on the transmission and overfills the, the transfer case. So we're just going to clean it all and uh, pop it off. Hopefully we don't have to remove this cross member to get it out. But he's got a major engine oil leak there on the rear main seal and probably the front main seal. Okay, we've got the pan off. You can see that where that little um, cam is for that cable. You can see that it's just just flush there, it's not loose. And if you have a look, a bit hard to see there on the camera, but 
the little pressure valve is in there that operates it. Um, good idea to just check all these connectors, make sure they're all okay. They do normally on a seem a little bit loose. Um, always nice to just give them a wriggle, just make sure that the connection's good. And that's basically it. We're going to change the filter. Um, what happens on these, because the sucking action of the, the filter is constantly working, um, these stainless steel filters, uh, stainless steel mesh, they can develop a split. Um, sometimes, because they're a shrouded filter, it's hard to see in there without cutting it open if it has got a split. Um, this one's done 488,000 K, so I don't believe this one's this filter's done that, but um, we just like to change that anyway. So we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, and we'll just clean up the pan as well. You can see the two magnets in there. Um, collecting all the rubbish that's floating around in there. Looks fairly clean. There is a normal amount on there. And what we like to do is just put these magnets up on that ridge if it's not in the way of anything, which it shouldn't be. And that'll allow the magnet to work on on the bottom side as well. Just trying to get as much surface area of the magnet working if we can. Now while I've got the filter off, I've noticed these are a little bit loose for my liking, so I'm just going to squeeze, pinch that little spade terminal in there, just with a pair of pointy nose pliers, just, and, and I'll do the same with the other two solenoids as well. Now I've pinched all in, but you might find that um, sometimes the plastic's quite brittle in there, um, so it might break, but as long as those spade terminals are nice and tight, um, even if you break that plastic a little bit, it won't matter so much. Now I'm just going to replace this little o-ring. I've noticed it's flattened right out. Um, so we'll just replace that o-ring as well while we've got it out. We've got the filter back on. There we go. You can see that one, how flattened out it is. And the new one, it's pretty well raised. There you go. See how it's flattened out and it's wider. So we don't care about the width, we care about how raised it is so it seals on the outside of that tube. Okay, we've got the pan back on. That's always a good idea to just double check that you've put everything back on that you've taken off. We're just going to refill it with some Dextron 3 fluid. Um, you can put the synthetic fluid in it as well if it does does a lot of work but Dextron 3 is basically the base um, quality of oil and thank you for watching